We're going to get started. Um, I would uh, welcome you all to uh, the Danvers Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, uh, I would ask that you all uh, turn your cell phones to off or to vibrate so we're not interrupted. I, I know we got a lot of folks in the audience tonight. Please uh, keep your chatter quiet so we can move along. I know we got pending snow as well, so um, we don't want to keep everybody here all night, and some of these things do tend to draw out. Um, I'm going to start first by introducing the uh, zoning board members. Uh, down to my right is Jeff Sauer. Our clerk tonight is Ken Scholes. Uh, myself, John Bowner, as the chairman. Uh, to my left is Ken Jarvanen and uh, Kareen uh, Doherty down the end. Um, and from our uh, planning department, we have our staff planner, uh, Georgia Pendergrass, and our planning director, Mr. Brian Zakelli. Uh, we, folks, we do not have any minutes to accept, so I'll we'll just move on. I'll, I'll just briefly tell you what our procedure is. Uh, we would ask, uh, we are on Danvers Cable, so um, when the clerk reads your case, we ask that you come to the podium, um, uh, identify yourself and your address, speak to the case as to what you're looking to do or what you would like from the board. Uh, from there, we'll turn it back over to the zoning board members who will ask questions of you. And from there, we'll open it up to the public. Um, we ask that the comments are funneled through the zoning board to the chairman um, and not directed at the applicant themselves. Uh, from that point, once we close the public hearing, uh, you will uh, get to hear us deliberate here in the open forum. And at that point, uh, we will give the applicant their options as to uh, whether the, uh, you know, a continuance is requested or a vote or a withdrawal. Um, we ask that if you do walk over to the screen to please bring the microphone with you. Again, it's uh, not only for the folks at home, but it's also for our ability to take minutes and uh, be able to capture what is being said tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with that said, uh, did I miss anything? I don't think so. I think we're good. So uh, we've got a couple of lengthy continuances here on our first couple of cases so uh, with that said we're going to get right underway and Mr. Clerk if you can get us started. Thank you. Uh, first case is 44 Summer Street zoned R2. Request for a special permit in accordance with section 30 and for a finding in accordance with section 3.10 of the Danvers zoning bylaw to allow an expansion of an existing grandfathered nursing home slash memory care facility use to accommodate 30 additional nursing beds Request is made by Danvers MC Owner LLC and Gambrell LLC, docket 22-4987. And Attorney McCann, just before you get started, I, I will recuse myself. Uh, uh, Kareen Doherty will act as chair <clears throat> on this case. And um, as you just explained to me, the, the variance has already been withdrawn on this. And you're just looking for a special permit and a finding, correct? Actually, at this point, we are only looking for the finding. For the finding, okay. And I will uh, turn it over to you, Kareen. Um, I would like to ask the um, secretary to read the emails that we received today from the Butters. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We have three emails uh, received today. Uh, the first is from uh, Sarah and Jeff. D'Antonio of 14 Kenmore Drive. Uh, we do not support the proposed changes for the property at 44 Summer Street. Our neighborhood is not zoned for something like this, and making it larger will be a negative impact, especially on the adjacent property owners. This is already detrimental to the neighborhood, and an expansion will be more detrimental. Uh, the second email is from Maureen and Jim Laravie of 7 College Pond Drive. Um, They've been to the past meetings. They purchased their land in 1992, uh, knowing that Cedar Glen and later Seasons would be a part of our backyard view. To its credit, Seasons has improved the look of the property, added some fencing, and in general been a good neighbor. With Cedar Glen now with, with Seasons, there has always been noise from delivery trucks, maintenance machinery, um, emergency vehicles. Um, it has not been awful, but an increase in the physical size of the property simply means more noise and an even greater disruption of quiet with emergency vehicles arri arriving 24-7. 
This is a residential neighborhood. Most of us have been homeowners for a long time and do not see the need for additional skilled nursing facilities in the area where there are already so many. We ask that you deny the request presented before you this evening. And the final email is from Betsy Gadwa of 12 Summer Street. Uh, she was un unable to attend the meeting tonight. Uh, she lives at 12 Summer and would like to voice her formal opposition to the expansion of the existing facility located at 44 Summer Street. It has been voiced in numerous pr previous CBA meetings as a neighborhood. We already feel that the existing facility presents a problematic due to direct neighbors and has presented as problematic to peripheral neighbors with range of the cr frequent EMS calls. An increase in size and residency would only present an additional strain on the surrounding neighborhood and town services. I am in opposition of any special permit to be granted for expansion. Thank you. Ms. McCann. Thank you very much. My name is Nancy McCann. I'm here on behalf of the applicants uh, relative to 4244 Summer Street. Brendan Mallon um, is here this evening as well. And we started this process with you some time ago, last uh, beginning of last summer, I believe. And at that time, we were requesting um, a special permit and a variance and a finding uh, to make alterations and expansion of the existing uh, memory care facility. You'll recall back in 2013, this board granted a finding to allow an alteration of that non-conforming use, uh, which is the nursing home facility. Uh, at that time, we reduced the number of beds from 100 beds down to 60 beds and also reduced and changed the use from a, nursing, from a general nursing home to a memory care facility. That was back in 2013. What we filed last year was a request to expand uh, the existing facility to provide um, 30 new beds and an additional an addition to the building and those 30 new beds were going to be general nursing home beds um, we've gone through a number and and it would have resulted in the antique uh, home on summer street being removed since that time we've met with you quite a number of times and um, and we have now revised the proposal a couple of times and what we have before you this evening is a proposal that requires not a special permit. It does not require a variance. The variance request was withdrawn previously, but we no longer need the special permit as we had requested. We simply need a finding to allow the alteration of the existing um, facility. And that alteration involves no new beds. Remember back in 2013, we received approval for 60 memory care beds. The proposal that we have before you this evening is to continue those 60 memory care beds. No change in the number of beds, no change in the use. This will continue to be a memory care facility. But what we are proposing is the addition to the physical structure, to the building, um, to accommodate a better layout of, of the facility, to accommodate the amenities and the services that, um, and expectations of the uh, clients, uh, patients who will, be, who will be staying at this facility. So along this way, we have uh, divided by A&R the um, 42 and 40, 42 Summer Street to add some land to the existing 44 Summer Street. 44 Summer Street is now 2.62 acres of land. We are proposing again no increase in the number of beds, no change in the use. This will continue to be a memory care facility and um, this is a single story addition that is fully conforming to the requirements of the zoning bylaw. Uh, I noticed in, in at least one of the letters there was a statement that this use is not permitted in the R2 zoning district. That is not correct. Memory care nursing home facilities are permitted. They are permitted by special permit um, 
under the zoning bylaw when you have a for-profit entity. If this were a non-profit entity, we would not need to be before you because this is fully conforming. But as a for-profit facility, we were required to get the finding as a non-conforming uh, use back in 2013, and we are not altering that use. We're not altering the memory care facility. We are not a component. We are not altering the number of beds. We are simply adding an addition, which you can see we used to have a pointer that is no longer here. The new Sorry, Nancy. Can you scroll out? has a technical delay it, I hit it but don't it, we all there's a little lag there we go cool. all right so there we have it okay so the new lot line as between 42 with the existing uh, antique is located here we have a new lot line that has already been created by action of the planning board and this land is has been added to 44 summer street through that a and r plan and what's before you tonight is a finding to allow a single story addition, which is outlined here in crosshatch, um, to be added to the existing facility. That addition is fully conforming to all setback requirements in the zoning district for, uh, for this use. There is no proposed increase in uh, employees. There will be no increase in deliveries. Um, the services will remain as they are now uh, as far as external services coming in for uh, the 60 bed facility that again was approved back in 2013. And uh, I would suggest to you this conforming addition, single story addition, um, is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what is already there. It is fully conforming and there is no increase in what was originally approved back in 2013. This is a significant change in what was filed back beginning of the summer last year. And those changes were made um, in response to comments that, that we've heard. Um, it has resulted in, in saving the antique out on Summer Street and has significantly reduced um, the proposal from, from the original application. Um, I think that is it. Uh, we are requesting a finding only at this point. And uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Brandon, uh, Brendan Mellon is here this evening as well. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Attorney McCann. Um, I'll begin on my right with Jeff. Uh, I have no questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ken? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so you said this is just a one-story addition, not two stories, one story. Correct. And you only need the finding because you're a profit. Because it, it's a non-conforming use because we are for profit, for profit, so yes. And that's the only reason you need the finding, correct? That's right. No further questions. Um, Ken? Um, can you explain um, why you need that extra spa space and what you'll be doing with that extra space? Yeah, I'd like Brendan to address you on that. Thanks. Uh, Brendan Mellon, <coughs> Gambrell LLC. So we'll just, currently we have, um, we have some shared units, which is how we get to utilizing our 60 beds. And they're just not generally popular. So we're gonna kind of abandon the, the shared units and that space will be used as, there'll be units that go in there um, and the shared units will go away and there'll be you know additional common space. But in terms of, uh, we're not adding anything else in terms of staff or, deliveries or food or nothing at all. So in terms of the, how we operate the community will be exactly the same. It'll just be over a bigger space. Um, so I don't know if Nancy noted, but I would note that just that it's actually, it reduces the nonconformity that it used to have by adding land. So by, by doing it, it's actually less of a nonconforming, you know, scenario now that we've 
providing land, additional land to it relative to what it was back in 2013. So we have the same amount of beds over a bigger piece of piece of land. Um, Yeah, it's it's mainly for the market needs. We originally we did in senior living. The, the, it changes a lot on what people want and these kind of husband and wife combos were and and these price point where you had a shared unit were popular and they're just not popular anymore. So um, we're we're kind of pretty much abandoning those and we're just going to go to all singles. So we'll still have sixty beds, but s spread through sixty units. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I actually have some additional questions. Sure. Um, I can actually ask the question I was going to ask. If you're keeping the amount of beds, why do you need this additional space? So you said that you're, you're eliminating the doubles. How many doubles do you have now or multiple rooms? Well, we have the capacity to go to 60. So right now I think um, we, we, we have it set up. We have some that we can be made into a double or made into a single. So right at this current moment, I think it's set up at um at like 58 in terms of so i think there's 40 singles and and, and seven or eight doubles something like that um so we have this kind of the doubles are set up that we can use them as as singles or doubles but they're um they're uh when when used as a single they're not they're not the kind of the most optimal i guess okay and all of these units now are self-contained meaning that it you know the bedroom the bathroom facilities they're all con contained in one yep okay and the new space um it it said on some of your literature that you provided will be used for common spaces like kitchen recreational space correct uh so in the in the new layout no so in the in the new scenario we haven't fully laid the floor plan out but it'll be 13 units and there might just be a little uh spot for um the, the admin to be stationed in that neighborhood, but it's substantially different from the original plan. We had a dining room, a living room, and we were treating it as a whole uh, additional neighborhood. So this will just be an expansion of an existing neighborhood in terms of dining room and living room. So we don't need those spaces and it'll just be the, the beds. And then I think they have in the current version, it's just a small, the size of one unit's worth of space for, uh, for staff to, to do their bookkeeping and, and things like that to manage that neighborhood. Okay, so how long do you anticipate the construction will be? Um, it's a good question. I, we haven't we haven't gone got down that road yet, but I mean the we can stay operating during construction because of uh, the way it's the way it's laid out here. So it's going to come off of of here. So we have no disruption here in terms of the existing residents. And then um, you know something like this is pr is probably. I don't even three to three to six months, something like that. It just depends on the market conditions when the when the come when we decide to build it. Um. Okay, so and that was going to be one of my questions, like how much disruption to the rest of the facility would happen during construction. But since you're not since you're not renovating any of the the existing space, you're just adding to it. Then once the new space is created those rooms that will go from being um, potentially two down to one they don't have to be renovated correct they just stayed the same it's just for one person instead yeah of two. they have so when they originally designed them they did this I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it the, the space is actually when you go into it it's it's uh it's shaped like two squares with a half wall that divides it and that half wall can be easily removed. It's it's not a movable wall, but it's a very easily removable wall. So we'll probably remove that wall, but that's something like the maintenance guy can do. It's not a it's not a hire a contractor, you know, big construction project thing. It's something the equivalent of of FF and E where you're redoing your carpets and things like that, which we do on an ongoing basis. So it's, taking those walls that would be ongoing maintenance. And as far as the permitting, if if we grant the finding tonight have you completed the whole process or what's the next step for you if we grant it tonight? If this finding is granted, this will trigger site plan review by the planning board. So we would go have to go through the whole site plan process with the planning board where, as you know, they get into lighting and landscaping and uh, general circulation and all that kind of thing. So that would be required. Okay. for the addition as you see it okay but but that would be the last stop yes yes okay mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Now out to the audience. Would anyone like to speak or have a question regarding this application? Good evening. Um, my name is Jen Lovell, and I live at 43 Summer Street, right across from um, 44. My husband and I are against any expansion to the existing structure at 44 Summer Street. Living across from the street, fr across the street from this facility, is already a nuisance to the neighborhood. <clears throat> excuse me, due to the increase of motor vehicle traffic, including regular police, fire, and ambulance response. There's a commercial snow and trash removal um, with backup alarms during the snowstorms. Adding to the existing structure would be more detrimental to the neighborhood. My husband and I were aware of the present nursing home located at 44 Summer Street when we decided to purchase our house in our residential neighborhood. Never did we imagine that the existing structure would ever, ever expand to another lot. Um, the size of the proposed structure is not what our residential neighborhood needs and it's not zoned for this. Um, allowing for this expansion would be more detrimental to the people who reside here. Thank you. Anyone else with a comment or question? Hi, my name's Marianne Owen. I'm at 36 Summer Street, so I um, live right next to the nursing home. We have a driveway in between. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate Jen's um, opinions. I don't really think that a expansion is necessary, especially now that they're not adding beds. They're just adding more space. And that affects myself, my family directly. So we've lived in uh, 36 Summer Street for four generations. So we have seen the building of a nursing home and we have seen now more expansion or the desire for more expansion. And so my concerns are once they have this footprint, can they then go up? Can they then, instead of being memory care, can they be a nursing home? Can they get all of those next things? And then each little step puts more and more stress on our residential neighborhood. So I think at some point we have to make a stand and say enough building of this nursing home or this memory care facility and to, you know, we understand that there's a facility there now, but more growth I think is um, not going to help the, the actual neighborhood of homes. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you. Just to, to answer uh, a couple of those comments, um, if this finding is granted, what you are uh, granting is what's being presented to you tonight. So, no, we couldn't go up. Uh, no, we couldn't change the use from a memory care facility back to what it was an original uh, nursing home facility. Um, this property and this site was not uh, originally started as a nursing home. In fact, the history of this is there was a motel on this property years ago. And uh, it evolved and, and became the nursing home. And again, a nursing home is a permitted use in this zoning district by right if it was uh, not for profit, by special permit if it is for profit. So the use is contemplated in the R2 zoning district. Um, and what we are proposing, the criteria being, is it substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's already there? And we would certainly say, no, it is not substantially more detrimental in that it, at, at this point, the, uh, the application before you doesn't increase the nonconformity. There is no increase in services. There's no increase in employees. There's no increase in the number of beds uh, over what was approved by this board almost 10 years ago. We're simply adding an addition that is itself fully conforming with the requirements of the R2 zoning district. Thank you. 
A any other comments? Mr. Bradstreet, you can go after this lady. Do you want me to introduce myself again? Yes, please. Okay, it's Marianne Owen. I'm at 36 Summer Street. I just need to respond. It was never a um, motel. It was Putnam Lodge. Putnam Lodge was a small family restaurant, which was a big barn, which was where the nursing home sits. It was part of the historical figure, historical figure, historical house. Um, but it was not a motel, ever. So I just, I need to be clear that that's not what that was for. So it's very different. And it was 50 years ago, 60 years ago, where there was no college pond. There was no house behind it. You know, there, I mean, it was a significantly different landscape. So you're already in a very um, packed area. So now expanding that packed area really puts stress on the neighbors around it. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bradstreet. Bill Bradstreet, town meeting member, precinct one. Live at 18 Essex Street. I know this piece of property is described as being grandfathered. At the time it was built for zoning was not as uh, friendly to the neighborhood as it is now. I think that <clears throat> adding anything to this detrimental to the neighborhood building would be more detrimental. This is a residential neighborhood other than this and the cemetery and the St. John's Prep. So I don't think that anything that's done to this small or large will help the neighborhood at all. It's a business help, but it's not a help to the neighborhood. And I'd like to think that <clears throat> something that's then done now, if it's approved, won't open the door to something else being done down the road. No matter what is said, there's nothing that, you, is, that is a sure thing that it won't, something won't or can't happen. So I, as far as being in favor of this, I don't live next to it, I don't live in the neighborhood, I wouldn't be in favor of this, thank you. Would anyone else um, like a comment or question? Good evening, I'm Anthony Brogner. I live at 17 Seneca Drive, which is perpendicular to the entrance of this facility. Um, I have a, like, a thought as far as this structure going up, they say nothing will change, but you know, now maybe stretching the employment a little thinner um, with caring for them at another wing or whatnot, whereas now maybe there's two people in a room, it's easier. So. I, I'm just afraid employment might go up, which would have more traffic already. I mean, I haven't seen it as much this winter, but there's quite an, on occasion I'll be driving into my neighborhood and there's cars parked right there on um, the entrance of Seneca, whether it's employees being dropped off, picked up, or guests, I'm not sure. Uh, I just know that they're not using our neighborhood for visits. Um, and I'm just, I'm against the proposal here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, Andrea Sears, 7 Colby Road. Um, I just want to basically reiterate a lot of the things that have already been said. I don't, I don't think they need to be said again. We've been watching this over several meetings. Um, also, I just wanted to mention um, that one thing that has been said several meetings ago was um, the trash. And um, to speak to the um, conservation areas that are around 
the facility. Um, they have been spoken to about um, removing larger pieces of trash, which they have done, but it's still the small pieces of trash that are still a problem and um, just in the future, it, it needs to be addressed. So um, I just think that it's important that it's pointed out again that they just haven't been the best neighbor in terms of um, trash and keeping up with that. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Okay, we can begin our, oh, would you like to respond? Uh, I would, just a, just a couple of statements. Um, with regard to parking, we do have more parking on site than required under the zoning bylaw as the plan, uh, plan is shown. And again, parking will be reviewed by the planning board during the site plan process, but we do meet the parking requirements under the zoning bylaw. Um, the requirements for the finding are that this is a not this use as um, proposed with the addition, and really that's what we're talking about, is not a change of use, not a change in density, but a compliant addition being added to this building, whether it's substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. This is a mixed-use neighborhood already. It is residential for sure. There is assisted living in this neighborhood. There is a very large middle school, high school uh, campus in this neighborhood. There's also an elementary school in this neighborhood. So uh, it's a mixed use neighborhood now, but residential is, is certainly part of it. What we have here in this memory care facility is residential. This is where folks with memory care issues need to live. They need services that aren't available in single family homes. This is their home. This is where they live. So this is very much a residential use in this residential neighborhood. And that's why the use is, is listed as it is in the R2 zoning district. But let's not forget that this is a mixed use neighborhood with some pretty intense uses. This not being one of them, quite honestly, when compared to St. John's Prep, the other schools, and, and the other, we've got an assisted living uh, facility right on the corner of Summer Street. So um, again, we feel that this use in this proposal that's presented to you this evening, which is not increasing the number of beds, it's not increasing the staff, it is continuing the use as a memory care facility by adding an addition with additional land that's already been added to the to the property um, and that addition itself being a single story and fully conforming is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood from a legal standpoint uh, than what already exists thank you very much before we begin deliberations do any board members have any additional questions okay we will start with Jeff uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is a very difficult case, but um, the fact that so many neighbors have appeared so consistently over such an extended amount of time uh, leads me to, and I don't live in this neighborhood, I don't know what is detrimental, but um, I have to defer to the opinion of the neighbors and uh, vote no on this. Thank you. Ken? Um, I'll reiterate what Jeff said. Um, I've been on this board for quite a while, and I have never seen any more neighbors come with a negative uh, attitude towards a, a project ever. So I'm a no. Ken? I would actually vote yes because a, um, there was a purchase of a big lot of land. It was split with two conforming lots and they're preserving that first lot with 42 is not on the not in the situation now but that's some frontage that is staying and it's good a good buffer from the street and they're utilizing the other half which is fully conforming lot fully conforming structure meets all the side um, setbacks and stuff so I would I would vote yes on this I, I think they so they went down from two levels to one and it, 
it's not going to be absolutely stunningly beautiful, but it makes sense. I think for the land, what if they sold that parcel to some, someone else and then someone else tried to build something um, commercial like, like a motel or something in the future? I'm just saying. So, I mean, for me, I think it is a good use of the property. Um, I'm sorry I don't live in the neighborhood, but I've driven by a lot. But I, I just think it's it's appropriate for the neighborhood for how, as it is now. Um, I, I agree with, with Ken and Jeff. Um, I haven't been doing this as long as they have, but for as long as I've done this, I have never seen the neighborhood, I guess, intense um, unionization and coming together to oppose a project like this. And it just leads me to believe that, that a lot has gone on with this um, particular memory care unit and to the detriment of the neighborhood. So I would have to vote no as well. So three no's and one yes. I think at this point we would request that uh, to withdraw this application and uh, see where that takes us. Okay, thank yeah. you. Madam Chair, I propose that we uh, withdraw this case. I'll thank second. You. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Aye. Thank you very much. Well, they were drawing these. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> okay, so we'll amend that. So yeah, four yeah. to nothing. Four to nothing. Sounds good. Okay, uh, moving along. Uh, actually, uh, zoning board members, one thing I forgot to mention at the top, a little housekeeping. Uh, uh, you are all in receipt of uh, ethics training. <laughs> yes. And I, I learned today we're considered special employees, so it's, uh, I guess I took away that from it. Um, anyway, uh, just a reminder for everybody to get uh, their ethics training in. So uh, with that said, uh, Mr. Clerk, if we could uh, jump on to the next case. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our next case is 48 Cranebrook Drive. This is Highway Corridor Zone. Uh, request for use variance from Table 1 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaw to allow the use of the existing property to change from extended stay hotel to, to multi-family rental apartment. Request for a dimensional variance from Section 10 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaw to allow a, a reduction in the number of required parking spaces for the proposed multi-use family use. A uh, request is made by PEG Boston Danvers Property LLC, docket 22-4992. Thank you very much. Go right ahead. Thank you. My name is Nancy McCann. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Peg Boston Danvers Property, LLC. With me tonight is Jeff Ware, general counsel for the applicant. Also with me um, remotely is Phil Olmsted uh, from Nelson Nygaard, our uh, parking consultant for this project. And uh, we are requesting a use variance to allow the conversion of the existing residence in from an extended stay motel to um, a rental property providing um, small units for uh, for rent um, meeting what we we believe to be certainly a need uh, for for smaller type of units within um, within Danvers and certainly within within this area we made a full presentation to you back in in the fall um, the current uh, residence in operator is uh, is getting out of the business and divesting itself of these what we call first generation extended stay type of facilities uh, that are are older and um, not designed to meet the extended stay. Um, type of design as we as we currently know it and uh, unfortunately what happens with when a Marriott who has operated residence in for a long period of time 
um, get divest itself of a property, sometimes those properties are picked up by uh, lesser equipped operators for uh, for extended stay hotels and you and motels, and you see one of those um, already in existence uh, within the highway corridor. And what the applicant is proposing is to acquire and operate this property as a rental uh, facility, rental housing, uh, providing rental rental units. And uh, we made our full presentation, and the issue really uh, came down to, well, uh, I think the board generally um, liked and agreed with the reuse concept of this property. Um, there were concerns regarding parking. We have uh, a total of 96 units now and 98 parking spaces. And there was a concern about uh, whether there was, in fact, enough parking. And uh, the suggestion was made, um, could we reduce the number of units? Could we find more parking uh, within the site? Uh, in order to address the concerns. And um, as we showed on the site plan, this particular site has some constraints because of wetlands. So we can't just, while we have a lot of space on the site, we can't just pave it and make more parking. But uh, could we reduce the number of units? Could we find a way to find uh, more parking spaces? And in fact, since the last time we met with you, <coughs> we've done both. Attorney McCann, could I ask you to just pull your microphone a little closer? Yes. There we go. How's Thank that? You. Did you miss everything? No, I, I'm listening. Okay. All right. There's a lot of background noise up here. Uh, we uh, have provided to you uh, on uh, prior to the, the last meeting, actually, or, or right around the time of the last meeting that was canceled due to snow, um, we have uh, gone back uh, and looked at uh, how we could address the parking concerns. And as I said, we've done um, both uh, suggestions that were discussed at the last meeting. We have reduced the number of units from 96 units down to 88 units. And we did that by removing a building. Building number eight is being removed. By removing building number eight, we were able to add parking spaces within the area, 12 parking spaces, where building eight was. We also changed the circulation around the site so that it is one-way circulation, and that allowed us to add some more parking spaces. So we have gone from um, 96 units down to 88 units, and we have constructed some additional parking spaces, a total of 12 new parking spaces where building eight was removed, and an additional 11 units. We actually found a couple more spaces that we could provide even since the correspondence I submitted in January. So we've been able to add uh, an additional 30, um, an additional, I should say, um, 23 parking spaces so that now we are providing one parking space per bedroom plus we will have an additional 35 spaces on the site. Was it 23 or 25 spots you added? I believe we have added uh, 11 and 12. So I think that's 23 okay. parking spaces. However, I'm going to defer to our parking consultant to go through the, the parking with you so that we have exactly the, the correct number. But we are ultimately what we end up with is one parking space per bedroom plus an additional 35 spaces, which we certainly think uh, meets and exceeds um, the number of parking spaces required. And at that, uh, at this point, I think, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to turn this over to Phil Olmsted, sure. yep, and he will walk you through the parking. That's uh, fine. Thank you. Hi, folks. Can you all hear me? Yes. All right. I'm going to share my screen. If that's okay. Yes. Give me one minute. And can folks see that? Yes. All right. So good evening, members of the board. Thank you for having me. 
Uh, my name is Phil Olmstead. I'm a principal with Nelson Nyer Consulting Associates. Uh, and y'all aren't seeing um, slide notes or anything like that. It's just the screen. Yes, we don't yeah. see your notes. Oh, okay, great. Uh, sometimes that gets swapped. Um, yeah, principal with Nelson Nyer Consulting Associates. We're a national transportation planning firm, and I focus on parking work uh, across the country. I've been working with the PEG team and here to provide a quick overview of our updated parking analysis uh, based on the revised land use program and the site plan. Uh, whoa, oops. Sorry about that. And technical difficulties, one second. All right, let's try that again. All right, uh, here's a quick overview of our methods and assumptions. Uh, we utilize uh, ITE's parking generation manual uh, to, it's really the industry guideline for this type of analysis. Uh, ITE provides peak parking demand ratios by land use based on historic studies of actual sites. We use those ratios to estimate demand by land use and also apply time of day factors as parking demand is not uniform throughout the day. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, we have 88 units, all of which are smaller units and there are 11 affordable units. These are really important considerations when looking at parking demand as smaller units and affordable units generate uh, uh, typically generate lower parking demand. Uh, we compare the peak parking demand to your code and what's on site. And uh, the new site plan has 123 spaces, all of which are what we call unbundled. They're not reserved to specific units. This is a really important management approach. Make sure there's efficient use of spaces so that when one resident is away, uh, that space can be used by others. And really given the site's location, uh, we conservatively did not assume any, any sort of trip reduction or parking reduction factors. Uh, here are the ratios we utilize from ITE for the most similar land use categories within the national guidelines. So for the market rate units, we assumed 1.21 and 1.31 vehicles per dwelling unit at peak period, respectively for the weekday and weekends. For the affordable units, we assume 0.99 and 0.79 vehicles per dwelling unit at peak. And we also wanted to account for the unit size, so we estimated demand based on per bedroom ratios for market and affordable. This is a distinct kind of analysis we did, not additive, uh, really to show for comparison purposes. <laughs> and an important note here is that both of these ratios that we use when we try to estimate how many vehicles come to uh, a, a site or for a project, this includes both resident and visitor demand. So as you can see, your parking code is above industry guidelines, especially when accounting for unit size and affordability. Uh, so when you multiply the land use program by those ratios, this is what we estimate for peak parking demand. So if you look at it on a per dwelling unit, uh, unit basis, about 104 to 108 vehicles at peak period, uh, or about a 15 to 19 space surplus uh, with the new site plan. And when we look at by those bedroom ratios, really trying to account for the size of the units and that affordability component, we estimate a, a slightly bigger surplus. So in, in short, either way, uh, we think that on-site supply is sufficient to meet parking demand. Uh, it's also important to look at parking demand by time of day. So this is a complicated graph, but I'll walk you through it. So we uh, apply what we call time of day factors as parking demand uh, varies throughout the course of the day. So this chart shows uh, on the bottom hours of the day, so from 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. Uh, the y-axis shows demand. Those red uh, bars are demand on the weekends. The blue bars are demand on weekdays. That solid black line is the on-site spaces and the dashed line is uh, what your code requires. So as you can see for residential uses, uh, parking demand is lower during the day as people go to work or to school or to run errands. Residential demand, parking demand really peaks in the evening at night and is higher on the weekends uh, than on weekdays typically. All very logical things, but with some actual math behind it um, when we look at it um, and do these types of analysis. Uh, so again, you can see visually, we estimate that on-site supply is now sufficient to meet 
uh, peak demand in the evenings and during the day. Uh, we also know of concerns about spillover into adjacent parcels. Uh, PEG is working to further manage that with permits, but we also looked at ITE, the, the national standards, to kind of see when the, the peak demand is for discount superstores, and that's typically in that 12 to 5 window on weekdays and weekends. And as you can see, the peak periods for these two uses don't typically match up. They don't typically align. Here's that same graph on those per bedroom parking demand ratios. So again, lower overall demand when you start to think about bedroom size and affordability. Um, and again, the, the matchup with uh, the discount superstores. Um, and so to wrap up, uh, the team is requesting the variance as the project can't meet the code requirements. Uh, we believe that the municipal code is too high and not in line with industry standards, especially given the unit size and affordability component of the project. Our analysis estimates that on-site supply is sufficient and potential spillover conflicts are less likely to materialize now, especially due to the mismatch in typical hours of peak demand. And uh, the PEG team is also working to take further steps to manage parking with the residents to ensure um, there's as few conflicts as possible. So with that, I'll stop talking and be available for questions. Thank you. And let me, uh, let's see, let me shut this off one second. As, uh, as Phil alluded to, and as we discussed at the last meeting, um, PEG as the operator will be um, enforcing the parking requirements under the strict lease agreements, uh, which will state that uh, the number of parking spaces, which would typically be one, uh, that would be allocated to the unit um, that's being rented. Some may not want a parking space uh, at all. Remember, we do have some units that, uh, that are affordable units. Um, some people don't have a car, uh, and they would uh, be able to opt out of, uh, of even having a, a parking space. Um, there will be in the lease agreement no uh, parking will be permitted off site. No parking will be permitted in areas not designated as parking spaces on the site. And importantly, and what is not typical in a, in a lease, is that violation of the, pro, of the parking requirements will be cause for termination of the lease. Um, finally, uh, just going back and reminding the board, this, uh, this conversion will trigger the affordable housing component under the zoning bylaw and at 88 units we would be providing 11 affordable units and as we discussed with you and presented initially um, affordable units can be uh, designated for those under the under the zoning bylaw uh, meeting 80 percent of area median income 80 percent ami we are proposing that our affordable units will be available for those making 50 percent of area median income, which is meeting a real need um, within the community by providing units that are affordable to those who make even at a, a lower rate, a lower income level. You should have received um, then a standard affordable unit at 80% AMI. Um, you should have received in your packet. We have had the opportunity to meet with the Danvers Affordable Housing Trust. We met with them in January, and you should have a letter from the Affordable Housing Trust um, that indicates support uh, for this, um, this proposal. And under this proposal, the affordable units will be set aside at a deeper level to 50% AMI. This will help reach a group of households in the region that are generally underserved. The trust put, puts much value on securing units like this. Um, so with that, I would be happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you. Um, I will start down there with you, Corrine. Uh, what is the breakdown um, between studios and one bedroom? Uh, let's see, I believe I have that. Uh, 66 studio, 22 one bedroom. And the affordable units, would they be all studios? It would be a mix. They're, it's a, a ratio mix. Do you know what the breakdown is? 
Uh, I could do the math, but it looks like it's about a third um, of the units are one bedroom and two thirds are two bed, or sorry, a third of the units are one bedroom and two thirds of the unit are uh, units are studios. So two thirds of 11, I'll do the math. Too late for me to calculate. Yeah. About three or four so units. About, yeah, three or four units. Yeah would be okay. uh, one bedroom, the rest would be uh, studios. Okay. Um, will there be a property manager on site? Yes. And so I assume it's that property manager that would be monitoring the parking situation? Yes. Okay. And there will be placards or some, uh, some sort of designation within the vehicle for those who have the right to park there. Okay, and you also stated that um, obviously some people might not have a car or need a car. Um, is, there, is there an additional um, rental charge if you do want a parking space in order to get the placard? Is it? Nope. Okay. No. Okay. Those were all my questions. Thank you. Thanks, Kareem. Ken. <clears throat> so does this have to go to site approval to look at parking and everything uh, we have requested as directed by the former uh, planning director when we filed this application that we should be requesting a parking variance which we have that this board is acting upon so um, you are granting both the use variance as well as a parking variance in accordance with the uh, analysis that we've presented to you okay all right thanks so, Attorney McCann, just clarification on that. You're saying you will not be in front of the planning board if you go by this board, if this passes here? Um, I would defer to the planning staff as to whether uh, reduce changing this use is going to require us to go through site plan review. Uh, under the new site plan regulations, it's, it's not always crystal clear as to when it needs to go through okay. site uh, plan let me, review. Let me go and uh, let's see if we can ferret that out because I'm under the impression you would be going in mm -hmm. front of the planning board. So how says you, Mr. Zakelli? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I would consider this a change of use. Um, it's a different type of uh, residential use. They could have potentially different um, requirements, services, that those type of things. So I would, um, and it's not, um, so yeah, after uh, conferring with staff, we all were all in agreement that this would be a change of use and it would require them to go to the planning board okay. uh, for that. Okay, you clear that good? Okay. Yeah, so okay. I mean, so that could blow it out of the water, like even if we said yes, but they may not like the possible. parking. All right, definitely possible. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, it's not, all right, thanks. Yeah, uh, it's, a site plan approval is typically not uh, something where it's a yes or no, like this board does. It's, it's a yes, but with conditions that you do certain things. Um, and modifying the site plan this went through site plan approval orig originally when it was built so it would be a modification of that site plan all set Ken yep uh, Ken um, I have no questions I'll wait for comments thanks Jeff uh, I have no questions thank you mr. chairman thanks uh, attorney Ken um, so I know Kareen had asked about on-site manager how, how exactly does that work I mean how is parking enforcement going to take place, for instance, with guests or who don't live there and don't have the placard for their cars? Well, there will be guest spaces. Again, we have what we feel is, is more spaces, 35 extra spaces over one space per bedroom um, or one space per unit, I, sh I should say. Um, and so the uh, the the manager would be a, these are small units. Remember, we discussed this at the last meeting. These are not units where you are going to be hosting big Thanksgiving dinners, big parties, that kind of thing. They're, they are small 400 plus square foot units. Only college keg parties. Yeah, probably not. We'll, uh, we'll avoid that. Uh, but that's what the manager, just like any sure, sure, uh, development, it, it. Uh, if there is a, a parking issue, they find out who is violating a violation of the parking requirements and rules and regulations is grounds for termination of their lease. And um, is there any discussion or have you guys considered or what has been cons 
to consider around public transportation like the a T stop or a bus stop I, I just I feel like this is kind of an isolated site where it's on the highway there's not great sidewalks if any that I'm aware of to get in and out of this site so how do you right. envision people without motor vehicles getting to and from Uber okay so no, nothing popular. to do with the MBTA or anything like that? Uh, no, I think that would point. be highly unlikely. Perhaps we'll get the MBTA in downtown Danvers first. Um, yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, so any, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the gentleman's name was online with us, but I, I know um, in his opinion the parking model that we hold to is excessive it's basically to summarize um however uh i'm just wondering if there was consideration by taking out a second building uh to get additional parking in that regard it, no there there what i mean you get to a point where it doesn't make economic sense to do that but we feel very strongly and and nelson nygaard uh as this board, I think, is aware, is a very reputable national company that the town of Danvers has hired to do its downtown Danvers parking study for the, for the downtown area, um, as well as ITE considerations um, and, and guidelines tell us that the number of parking spaces that we are proposing is going to be sufficient. For, uh, for this use. The downtown Danvers requirement under the new zoning districts um, is at a one space per bedroom, sometimes less than that, one and a half space per, per bedroom. And that's what we're providing here is, is, um, is one space per bedroom. Okay, so and just to recap, the new count is 88 units, 123 parking spots, and 11 affordable units. Correct. At 50% AMI. Correct. Um, okay, I think that uh, answers all my questions. Any additional questions from the board? I just have yeah, one. Go ahead, Kareem. Um, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the gentleman who um, presented the, the parking. Hey everyone, it's it's Phil <laughs> Olmstead. <laughs> I'm sorry. No worries. Um, That's okay. At one point, you mentioned um, peak demand, and you mm -hmm. um, you were discussing both the peak demand for um, this project and also for, for the the um, box store that's next door. Um, I, I don't understand why why there would be a correlation between the two because I want to say the gentleman from Costco was here and and he was adamant that he didn't want anyone from this um, you know, apartment facility to be parking on their spaces. So you weren't, you didn't mean that, that those people, no. the overflow no, would no, be parking no. over at Costco, right? Correct. That is not, that is not the intent of, of what I was communicating. What we were saying is trying to uh, illustrate when we look at the national guidelines and national standards around parking, um, it, there are, uh, typical patterns of residential demand. I think most people would agree that residents leave during the day and they're at work, they're running errands, they're going to school. So residential parking demand is highest in the evening. It is not during the day. Uh, so when we talk about maximum peak demand for these units, it's gonna be later in the evening. And what I was showing with that chart is that when we look at the similar guidelines for an use like a discount box store or superstore, their typical peak periods are around noon to five. Okay. So again, just to, just to reiterate that the typical peaks of these two uses are mismatched. And so again, we, we would not anticipate any sort of spillover. But again, that is all also being managed uh, at the site level with the property manager with the permit system. Does that clarify? Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, and, not to insinuate that they would be parking there. And Attorney McCann, uh, just one other follow-up. Uh, so if I imagine like any facility, there's maintenance workers that have to come in to do repairs and things of that nature. You've already talked about a property manager. Where do they park and, and how is that reflected in the 
the, uh, are they in guest spots? They are, are there designated employee spots? What, what's the deal there? There won't be designated employee spots. Remember, we have 35 extra spaces <coughs> over the one space per per unit. But um, as Phil mentioned during his presentation, the ITE uh, parking uh, guidelines that that we comply with. Um, takes into consideration guests already with uh, with the numbers uh, that that we comply with with regard to uh, to ITE trip generation and parking numbers. So there will be spaces, as Phil just said, folks will leave during the day when a contractor might want to come in, um, but we have 35 extra spaces over and above one space uh, per unit. Um, and there will be there will be sufficient spaces for them. And lastly, because um, it's that time of year, snow storage. Well, there has been snow storage. There is snow storage on this site. It's That's already not a designated it's spot already for it. There, it's this uh, property has been operating um, for. So really, no years. change in what they're doing currently. No. Okay. All right. Um, are we good up here on the board? Mm -hmm. I'll go out to the public on this one. This is for 48 Cranebrook. This is uh, currently the um, Marriott Guest Inn, I think it is. <coughs> Residence Inn, sorry. Uh, they are looking for a use variance to change this over to multifamily use. Anyone like to speak from the public? Raise your hand and you can come up and be heard. Mr. Mr. Press, you come on up. Again, Bill Brad Street, Essex Street, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 1. <clears throat> One building was removed to add parking spots. Are you the right boy for me to ask in the future if they decide to <clears throat> make the buildings that are left after this one's removed larger to accommodate more housing? Are you the board I'd ask? I'm just, a, uh, I understand they I want to make sure I understand your question. You're saying if they want to increase the size of an existing building they yes. have? To add more uh, units. Uh, yeah, they would, be, they would have to uh, come before this board, yes. Okay, so it's. So right now there's an existing facility, if you will, with uh, 10 buildings, 12 buildings, 12 separate buildings. This case started last June. I think that's pretty good that I remembered. Um, so they're reducing it down to 11 buildings. Okay. If they wanted to increase the size, physical footprint of any of those 11 buildings, they would be back before ZBA okay. would so, be their first stop. All right. So it's not impossible that they won't or could come back to. Uh, that's right. The, thank this you. This is still America. Oh, boy. <laughs> Any other uh, public comment or questions regarding uh, 48 Crane Book? And Attorney McCann, just to clarify, so it's a use variance and a dimensional variance? No. It's not a dimensional variance. Not a dimensional variance, use variance and parking variance. Okay. All right, I'll close the public hearing. Oh, sorry. Yep, come on up. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is John Paul Andrews, Director of Real Estate Development for Costco Wholesale. Uh, when we first learned of this project, we were concerned uh, for obvious reasons, sure. you know, particularly with respect to parking and something that really hasn't been talked about much, uh, traffic just in general. I, I know they do have a traffic in, uh, parking engineer or expert, uh, but not so much have we heard about uh, traffic and traffic engineering. Um, I will acknowledge, however, Peg did get with us and uh, we really appreciate it that they took the time and the energy to uh, hear our concerns and talk through them and in fact they have made some adjustments uh, that we feel like were a result from our discussion so we certainly do appreciate that um, and it does look like there have been some improvements taking down the building and getting the additional parking but I still have to you know be on the record saying that we we still have concerns um, you know that's uh, 
it still sees a, seems a little light on parking in our opinion. Um, and then again, we haven't really talked about the traffic so much. There's the one means of ingress, egress. Um, you know, people get off work. That's kind of the rush hour for people to go home and to for some people to go shopping and get gas in their car. So uh, just have a little bit of a concern of uh, traffic kind of coming, funneling into that, that one means of ingress, egress. Uh, so I just want to be on the record saying, you know, we do appreciate that they have worked with us on this, um, but we still do have concerns. Um, and then I do have one question, and, and Mr. Chairman, you, uh, you actually got to this uh, snow storage. Just to be more specific, though, I would like to leave with the one question to be addressed. Uh, if there's a snow storage plan, is it parking spaces? So when you say you have the 35 surplus stalls, it, I just want to make sure that wouldn't be the snow storage so that in the situation of a snowfall, you're really not a surplus park. So if that could be clarified, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Attorney McCann, you, can, you, Thank you. can you respond to both those uh, issues, both traffic and snow storage, although we know it's taking place currently. I guess maybe just some detail around it. Um, Yes, we don't anticipate that that traffic trip generation is going to change uh, dramatically uh, from what the current use is, which is an extended stay facility. And as we discussed during our original presentation, this really isn't a change of use. This is a change of how long people remain and live at the property. We have folks who are coming into the area. They can stay at the property now for six months. They could stay at the property for longer than that. Um, so it really is uh, when we're changing from uh, this use of an extended stay motel to rental, general rental units, it really isn't a change of use. It's just a change of how long people stay. So we don't anticipate a huge difference in the, the traffic. Traffic generation circulation is a site plan review matter, and that will be reviewed by the planning board as is snow storage. Right. Um, and the planning board has a general condition that requires um, the owner of any property that's a commercial property, if you have snow using up your parking spaces, you have to remove it from the site. That's a general condition of site plan approval, and I would anticipate that would be a, a condition here as well. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions? Uh Questions or comments from the public on this matter? Hearing, seeing none, I will come back to the board and uh, we will start down there with you, Corrine, for deliberations. Um, I, I would start by saying I, I generally am not in favor of use variances, um, especially one like this where you want to change to residential. I believe that that, that type um, of change should really come from town meeting and not from this board. Um, in addition to that, I, I also have concerns about um, about uh, parking. You know, this isn't downtown where you can walk to stores, you can, you know, walk to the post office, you can walk to CVS, you can walk to wherever you want. This facility is isolated and you know to have 11 affordable units have mostly studios um and the income and you know the the, the level of of occupant of these really isn't someone who's going to pay to uber wherever they go so you know to 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 give that to us as a mode of transportation for people who are going to live there um See, seems a little ridiculous um, and for those reasons I am a no. Thank you Corrine. Ken. <clears throat> I would uh, approve this because um, I, I like the housing I think we need some some more affordable housing um, well I like the 11 affordable units and I like the smaller units um, I think that's a good good area for it as well I am very worried about the parking but I think that's going to be ferreted out by site planning, like you mentioned. So there's another bite at the apple for that. Um, they could figure that out, I guess. Um, so I guess I'll take the the benefits with the non-benefits, and I, I, I would vote yes. Thank you, Ken. And Ken. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I think our only issue with this originally was the parking. Correct. I think they've addressed that. In fact, I think I even suggested why don't they take a building out. Um, so I think they've, they've addressed it. 
I mean, if this was downtown, people would be up in arms. 88 units downtown. Are you kidding me? They'd, they'd go crazy. This is already here. It's out of the way. Nowhere near downtown. I'm a yes. Thank you, Ken. And Jeff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with um, Kareen about the general use of use variances. Most towns don't even allow use variances. And uh, there have been many applications before this board where they've been trying to put residential properties in places where they don't belong. Um, but in this case, we have an existing facility uh, which will go dark if we don't find a good use for it. And um, the applicant has uh, struggled because of all of the restrictions of the site to uh, come up with a good plan. And uh, I think that it's very admirable. They've come up with enough spaces that they think are going to be sufficient. And I will vote for this. Thank I you. I still don't like the use of youth variances. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I just had to look to Denny's on Endicott Street, and uh, that's fear enough for me. Um, you know, and, and not to say that this would get to that point, but maybe people in town never thought Denny's would get to the point it's at. Uh, I agree with Corrine on many levels that the use variance is a very high threshold. Um, and I, I am very concerned about uh, more than the regular units, the AMI units that are 50% uh, income, I do think those people will struggle to transport in and out of this site. It's not a walkable site. Um, but with that said, uh, I can see the advantage here. We need housing. I think this helps us with our affordable count. And um, for those reasons, I would vote in favor of it. So if I could get a motion, please. And I, I'm still a little unclear, I guess, because I think we thought you were getting a dimensional variance, but you're saying it's a use variance. I understand that, but the that's it, I guess. Mr. Chairman, it's incorrectly labeled on the voting okay. guide there. It says dimensional in reference to the numbers of the parking spaces she's asking to reduce. And okay. I will. I just want to confirm with the board is 123 parking spaces they are requesting where 176 is required. Okay. And that's so the that's the second piece of the variance where we're uh, approving 123 where 176 is required. You're giving a variance from section 10 of the bylaw, which is our parking section, to allow that count. Okay. Are we Apologies. clear on that? If I could get a, uh, two motions, I guess. So this is two separate motions? Yes. Yeah. The use and then dimensional. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we issue a use variance from table one of the Danvers zoning bylaw to allow the multifamily use in the highway corridor zone where it is otherwise prohibited. Uh, the hardship is the site's soil conditions, shape, lo and location of existing buildings on the site. This condition does not affect other properties or structures in the same zoning district. A literal enforcement of the zoning bylaw would involve substantial hardship to the applicant, and granting this variance will not create a substantial detriment to the public good and will not nullify or derogate from the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. And we're adding the condition that the applicant will provide uh, 11 affordable units, 12.5% uh, of the 88 units proposed. At 50% AMI. At 50% AMI. I'll second that. I've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. And? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to issue a dimensional variance from Section 10 of the Danvers Zoning <laughs> Bylaw to allow 123 parking spaces for this multifamily use where 176 parking spaces are required. The hardship is the site's soil conditions, shape, and location of existing buildings. This condition does not affect other properties or structures in the same zoning district. A literal enforcement of the zoning bylaw would involve substantial hardship to the applicant, and granting this variance will not create a substantial detriment to the public good and will not nullify or derogate from the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. Second. I've got a motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. And Attorney McCann, I would just say uh, to continue to, you know, have your applicant work with Costco, um, 
I'm glad the dialogue is there, and I hope it continues, and I hope that it doesn't become a problem. So, Absolutely. Thank okay. You very much. Yep. Thank you. Jeremy, can we take a break? Yeah, we're going to take a short recess. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our next case is 36 Conant Street, zoned R1. Request for a finding in accordance with Section 3.11.B.1 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaw to allow the alteration and expansion of a legally pre existing non conforming building by adding a new story to the building to be no closer to the side lot than what presently exists. Um, request is made by Jody and Stephen Ginotti. Uh, docket 23-5009. Somebody here to speak on uh, 36 Conant Street. Please. <laughs> Snow didn't stop flying yet, right? Attorney McCain, we already read it in, so you're ready to go. Yeah. Moving slower than usual. 
Thank you very much. My name is Nancy McCann. I'm here on behalf of the applicants, Jody and Stephen Ginotti, who are the new and current owners of the property located at 36 Conant Street. Also with me tonight is Richard Bocelli, who is the project architect. And we are <clears throat> requesting a finding to allow an additional story to be put on the existing building. The reason we are here is that the existing building is non-conforming as to setbacks, and therefore that uh, triggers the need for a finding to add that additional story. Um, the height, however, as proposed, is fully conforming with the R height restrictions in the R1 zoning district. So we are not seeking a variance relative to height. We are seeking a finding to allow the alteration of the existing uh, the existing non-conforming building. This building was constructed in the early 1970s and as a multi-tenanted medical office building, and it does in fact look like a medical office building. Um, this board granted findings previously within the last few years to allow a conversion of the medical office uh, suites into four residential units. The Genotis purchased, uh, it purchased the property in December of uh, 2021 prior to their purchase in July of 2021 and after your findings that permitted the conversion of the property to residential units, for residential units specifically. Um, site plan approval was granted by the planning board and you do have a copy in your packages of the approved planning board site plan. Um, after the Genotis purchased the property, um, they uh, were reviewing the property itself, reviewing um, what type of residential uh, property they wanted to have and uh, have uh, determined that in order to attract good, high quality uh, tenants for this property and to improve the look of the property, adding an additional story no additional units, but adding an additional story will improve the look of the building and it will also provide needed storage on the site for those tenants. Currently under the uh, proposal originally approved for the four units, the living spaces would be in the lower level, which is not particularly desirable as well as what we'll call the first, uh, the first full level. Those were the units, four units located in that space. There was no particular area for tenant storage. And that was a concern when the Genotis met with, um, with their neighbors, and they did meet with their neighbors, um, that where are folks going to put things? You know, is, is it going to turn out having uh, everybody looks for extra storage and, and that sort of thing when they, uh, when they either downsize or when they move into what will be very attractive units here. And so providing some on-site storage in the lower level um, is, is a good way to address that concern and also provides an amenity for, uh, for the residents. Also in that lower level, which again is not particularly desirable as living space, will, um, there will be a fitness area um, in addition to, to the storage. So um, these are going to be rental units owned by the applicant and um, intended to, uh, to draw some good high quality tenants. So in order to accommodate, um, those those needs and and to uh, create a, an attractive looking property again no change in the number of units we're still uh, the original four units is all that's being proposed here there is no change in the number of bedrooms as originally approved by this board and in the planning board through site plan approval there is no change in the parking requirements um, it is this property is fully compliant with the parking requirements under the zoning bylaw. And importantly, there are no proposed changes to the approved site plan. So the site plan that was approved in 2021 by the planning board is the site plan for this project. 
We're not making any changes to that. There is no dumpster outside. There is adequate parking. There is uh, landscaping. Um, all we are doing is putting another uh, floor onto this building, and that floor and the height of the building resulting is fully compliant with, uh, with the height requirements in the R1 zoning district, which permits uh, a height of 30 feet, and we are at 26 feet 8 and a half inches. Um, so again, I met with planning staff. What did we need to do? to address this and uh, a finding is what we are requesting in order to allow the alteration of the building due to the existing building uh, being non-conforming as to setback requirements. At this point, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I'd like um, Rich uh, Bocelli, our architect, to present the elevation drawings to you so that uh, you can see the, and he can explain to you the proposal. Sure. Good evening, Richard Bocelli, 61 High Street, architect for the project. If you don't mind, could you go to the 2D elevations, please? Is that labeled your schematics? Back a couple pages. So I have, everything was sent to me in three separate documents, the site plan, the schematics, and the renderings. Right there. This one? Thank, yeah, Perfect. thank you. I'd like to call your attention to the, it, it's a subtle in this image here, but you can see the overlay of the existing building here. And that is depicted on your package as well. Thank you. <coughs> so as Nancy suggested, where we're, we are increasing the building, but we're not asking for relief in height of the building. That outline depicts the existing building. And as she also suggested, the, the applicant is willing to invest in upgrading the look of this building. It is an existing brick building that we could have easily put another story and added a brick facade and a flat roof to it. But they're willing to invest the money into making it more suitable for the neighborhood. Also, with the mansard design, that helps bring the scale of the building down so it may not appear as though it's a three-story building. And technically, it's a two-story above grade plane building. So what you're seeing here is some nice trim detail, cementitious siding, some banding, and, and just a much more beautiful building. And again, as Nancy suggested, we are adding that floor with two units on that upper level, two units on the middle level, and then common space and storage on the lower level. Thank you. Thanks. So again, we are uh, simply requesting a finding to allow the alteration of the existing non-conforming building in a way that um, that the height certainly meets the, the requirements of the zoning bylaw. We think we're by doing this, we're addressing some of the concerns that uh, were discussed uh, when the findings were originally granted and the site plan approval was originally granted, which is uh, Will there be things stored outside? And the answer is now we we can definitively address that by having adequate storage within the building for uh, for the residents. Um, this proposal, uh, we are not adding more units. We are not adding more density. We're not adding uh, more um, uh, parking. We're we're not adding more bedrooms. Um, so we are, are simply adding the, uh, the additional level again, which is compliant to the height requirement. And given, as, uh, as Richard just mentioned, uh, the investment that the Genotes are making into this property um, and, and improving the, the design and uh, getting away from the medical office building look that this will fit uh, well within the neighborhood and will certainly not be substantially more uh, detrimental to the neighborhood than uh, what currently exists on the property. 
um, I've provided the uh, the requirements for for the finding in the application and uh, detailed those and with that I would be happy to answer any questions thank you uh, attorney again just before I turn it over to the board um, so is anyone currently living in this building no it's empty and they've owned it since um, July December of 2021 December of 2021 um, I, I just remember this being a bone of contention for me which was that second egress out the back so really no one's had um, an opportunity to really tell me how that's going good or bad or indifferent so I'm just curious if the current owners have any input on that when you second exit so that so the neighbors in and I agreed with them at the time uh, because it was once a medical building uh, is it school street on the back side uh, central, central. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry which one central central, central street yeah central Ave um, that was open and uh, I thought it should be closed to further that residential feel so I, I guess I'm just curious is there any feeling by the current owners about that second entrance because I know I don't have it on my house and most don't so yeah uh, and uh, I'm going to let Richard address this but I, I will again reiterate this did go through the full site plan review process which deals with the circulation and the parking and all of that and we are making no changes to the approved site plan so Richard? so the rendering shows a, a you know a, a parking arm it, that's not the case right now or is that intended to be there in the future no it's, we had discussion of placing the parking arms but after speaking with the fire department they would prefer us not to do that okay so and there's it's still going to have an entrance from conan and be one way or an entrance Correct. from both central it, it and would be conan. one way traffic one way traffic. Yes. okay thanks i will turn it over to the board uh, jeff let's start with you uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Attorney McCann, um, what are the specific um, dimensional deficiencies that cause this to be nonconforming? The original building. Um, the front setback is 29 feet instead of 40. Okay. And the side setback is 12 feet instead of 30. Okay. And lot area and impervious surface and all that is I believe uh, lot area relates to the uh, number of units which we're not changing so we're not altering that okay. all right thank you same I with frontage thanks Jeff Ken thank you mr. chair um, I'm trying to understand this docket sheet so unit 2 was medical and then it became professional office correct and then it's only unit two went f to residential right yeah and then one three and four became residential yes to make them all residential. and and the reason that happened that way uh and i was involved i believe in only one of those um the reason it happened that way is that these were condominiums so you had different e those, those four old. units uh, were individually owned yeah. gotcha. and the three pooled together it was, it Correct. was messy okay it was messy okay so right messy but ended up being right. four residential units uh yeah and then i had a question too about the egress in, onto uh central yeah. but they kind of answered that so no further questions okay sorry i didn't mean to steal your yeah, phone that's fine <laughs> <Ken>. <clears throat> Will there be a laundry downstairs as well, or just a fitness room in storage? Laundry and units. So each unit will have laundry. Okay. Uh, that's all I get. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. Kareem? Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, the new owners purchased this property in December of? 21. 21? Mm-hmm. And what has happened with the property since December of 21? This process. Oh, this process. This process. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. There was there was an original thought of increasing the number of units, and the Genotes met with their neighbors, mm -hmm. um, and 
decided not to pursue that avenue. Um, so through the, the course of the year uh, about, uh, because we filed this in January, so it was about a year after um, they purchased, um, these plans were, were pulled together. And, and as you, I'm, I'm sure know, getting plans pulled together these days takes a little longer than it used to, to take. So the time period for the year uh, that they've owned it has been used trying to figure out how they could update, upgrade this particular property. But there was a thought of increasing the number of units and, and that did not proceed forward after meeting with their neighbors. Okay. So, so you have the plans in place, obviously. Um, when do you believe that construction will begin? As soon as we're approved. Okay, so you, you have a contractor? If, if you're going to speak, please come up to the microphone or I have Attorney McCann speak for you. So currently, uh, Tom Barraby might be on board. Sorry. Who are you? Oh, I'm so sorry. Steve Ginotti, Thank owner you. of the property. And so, so far we have a contractor on board. Okay. And based on his schedule, you know, as soon as we're approved, we could, on his schedule, start as soon as we fit in his schedule. And basically you're, I mean, you're obviously dealing with the exterior of the building, which was something that the prior owner was, was not that they weren't going to fix the outside, but they weren't going to do it to the extent that you're doing it. And then you have to rehab the, the interiors, correct? Correct. Um, currently, as we review the building, either way we go, we have to really reconstruct the building um, engineering-wise. It, it's really because how they framed it, they just sort of laid it over and made all these little cubicle offices. So either way, if it stayed as it is, it's a quite a bit of cost to leave it as it is. Um, and when we look at the building, that there's units in the basement, there's no really storage. Um, we presented a six unit to the neighborhood. It didn't go over well. So we looked at what can we do with these units? How do we make it more desirable? We get feedback from industry, realtors, uh, renters. We currently have another property in Danvers that we rent. We live in Danvers. Um, we felt some more storage was a positive thing. Open like a office space downstairs for a conference. Some people are working from home. You live downtown, you can walk, uh, gym space. So we looked at that. Okay, so maybe we can find a more desirable candidate that could live in this property that we feel that could afford to spend the money to go up. You know, so. Because you, you did spend a lot on the building. And so, I, you know, my concern is that it's already been a whole year. Mm -hmm. and even if you start construction now with all the renovations, it could take, you know, a considerable amount of time before you actually have renters in the building. Yeah, so it could take a, a, at least a year to complete, yeah. Okay. No further questions. Thank okay. you. Thanks, You're welcome. Karine. Um, so it... Um, Do you want to... I'm sorry. Uh, either, either. Okay. whoever's well, got I, I the can, answers is all okay. I care about. <laughs> all right, I'll try. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, are these going to be equal size units, and uh, what would be the square footage of each one uh, if this one? I through? think we're pretty close to equal size unit, right? I'll let Rich speak on that. Sorry, thank about you. That. <laughs> yeah, Richard Bocelli. The floor plans have the areas on them, and. A thousand square feet on the left side the the fourth unit that has the three bedroom is fifteen hundred okay and there was there is no change to the bedrooms though correct correct I did hear that okay um, so, so that's we got three existing. units at a thousand we got one at fifteen hundred correct okay if you need specifics I need to see the drawings now, well I'm just ballpark in here I'm just yes. trying to get an understanding yes so you're basically um, adding a floor will there be any rooftop mechanicals mechanical systems will be inside the units okay. to condensers either we're showing a couple condensers on the side okay. of the building and perhaps on the roof okay I mean I like the rendering of course all those trees look great but that's not reality right, right. those aren't there but the roof, as I see it in this rendering, is how it'll look. No rooftop yes. air conditioning. Correct. No, no, no. Okay. Right. Okay. And um, 
I think, Attorney, Attorney McCann, you already said this would not go to site review because there's not really a change in site. And just remind me how many parking spots uh, currently exist. We meet the required parking, and I'm going to have to look on here. Uh, we are going to provide 12 parking spaces. 12, okay. Which and is two spaces for each two-bedroom unit and three spaces for the three-bedroom unit. 12 spaces, okay. And, um, okay, I think that answers all of it. You said about a year for construction. Uh, any additional uh, board members have questions? Any additional questions? None. I'll go out to the public on this, 36 Conant Street. Hey, good evening. My, my name is Tim Curtin. I live at 35 Conant Street. Um, a group of neighbors have had a couple of meetings about this property. There's a number of them here right now if you want to raise your hands. Um, our, our concern is that the addition of a third floor is going to lead to an increase in the number of units in the building, not now, but perhaps at some point in the future. Uh, last October, the Genotis were kind enough to invite us over to a meeting to discuss their plans about the building. And at that time, they told us in order to make the project financially sound, they proposed adding a third floor to create a six-family dwelling. And as Steve just told you, there was a lot of, a lot of objection to that. Um, we know this is not on the table tonight, but we want to go on record that we remain strongly opposed to any increase in the number of units in the building. And if the zoning board grants a finding to add a third floor, we ask that a written condition be added to limit the number of units, both now and in the future, to four with a maximum bedroom count of nine. Um, I have a formal letter here we'd like to present to the board, and we can send a copy to the uh, Genotti's attorney, but uh, we have a, a letter from over 20 neighbors asking that that condition be added if you do, um, do, do it in favor. Steve and Jody, we appreciate you're trying to improve the neighborhood. Um, we, we, we love what you're doing with the aesthetics of the building. We welcome you as neighbors, even though you won't be living there. <laughs> um, and we're just against any, any possible increase of units in the future. Um, there's a couple other people with us too that want to speak tonight, but sure. thank you. Just let me check. Uh, so, Attorney McCann, you would take that as a condition to limit it to four units and a bedroom count of nine? Yes. Okay. How's that? That was easy. May I say one more thing? Um, sure. Last time around, um, the, the, the previous um, finding that you granted, the fire department did come and they wanted, they wanted to leave that in one way, uh, going all the way through. Um, and there was a couple dimensional dimensional things, you know, concerning the size lot. But I just wanted to mention that about yeah, the fire department. Yeah, I, I, I know what the fire department department wanted. It didn't make sense to me as a resident um, because I <clears throat> my thought was the, you know, uh, what says more residential than not having uh, egress out my backyard. I don't have it uh, on my house. I just, I just wanted to remind yeah. you that that, that, yeah. that was no, the last I, time. I remember it vividly. Yeah. Does anyone, okay. anybody else want to speak? Or? Thank you. Anyone else would like to be heard on 36 Conant Street? Come on up. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Elaine Waleko. I live at 41 Central Ave. Um, Yes, we would like the building to look a heck of a lot better than it does now. Sure. Um, however, the comments about not having it go any further, that is true. Um, we also worry about the traffic flow and the, the parking, even though there's a number of parking spaces that's within you know, what we need there, that's fine. However, on Central Ave, it's a narrow street. In the wintertime, it's even that much more narrow. It would make it difficult if guests or visitors are parking there and people can't get in and out of their driveways etc so that is a huge concern and um, basically that that's about it right now very good thank you anyone else on 36 yeah come on up uh, my name is Dan Albania I live at 26 Central Avenue and I know there was a lot of concern about the trash so I guess I'll bring that subject up as far as um, 
when it was proposed to be the six units, there was going to be a dumpster out there. Do we, you don't need the dumpster anymore? Correct. Okay, so where are the trash barrels going to be? Through the chair, please. Up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Where are the trash barrels going to be? Okay. Because I, I, um, they'll go out with they'll go out with the regular Thursday trash. So yeah. is there going to be a spot for the trash barrel somewhere? Attorney, can you want to respond? Do you have additional questions? I do. Yeah, go ahead. Let's get them all over. Well, it was, it was more of a, 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 I'm wondering. So on the original letter from Attorney McCann, um, <coughs> letter to Ms. Pendergrass, it said something about uh, residential amenity space in the lower level, including a fitness area and storage space for residents. And then when you looked at the, uh, the project narrative, one, two, three, the third um, paragraph talked about proposing to use the less desirable existing lower level which has been built out for medical office space for common area amenities including a fitness area, common party room, highly desired resident storage areas as well as the previously proposed bedroom. And then if you go to um, paragraph four in that project narrative, it doesn't say anything about the bedroom. It just says about resident storage, fitness, and common party room amenities. So there's going to be a bedroom in the lower level? That's my question, I guess. Okay. We'll address them all at the end. How about that? All righty. Um, and could I ask the question about what, what was the resistance from the fire department for well, I think blocking it, off that Central Ave? I, again, I'm paraphrasing, but they said they, I thought, wanted it to be able to pull their truck through. But they can't pull their truck through at my house and probably most houses in Danvers. So I'm not sure why. I, I didn't agree with it then. I still don't agree okay. with it now. But... Um, we tend to yield to the fire department, so that's that was their request, and I think uh, you, you probably you probably know that area that that driveway going through that is a I, I do. huge cut through for yeah. people and just I, and I think circumventing that's why the, the square. Uh, thought about a, a parking arm or speed bumps or something. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's their property; they're going to maintain it. I think if they're going to put this level of money and effort into putting this kind of building there, I'm sure they're going to address it. Could I address the applicants? You, through me. <laughs> so the question was this. When we met in October, um, they're, they're very great, very nice people. I'll, I'll second what everybody said about them. But when we met in October, they seemed to me anyways that they were very adamant that if they couldn't make six units, then they wouldn't be doing the project. Well, I think you already heard them state so, that they... they heard the neighbors and uh, they've since revised. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering because they were very adamant about the fact that they wouldn't be yep. doing the project. The so I'm wondering what's changed, that's all. Yeah, well they can speak further to that, but they are going to take a condition that it will only be four units and nine bedrooms total. Okay. And, that, and is, that, is that written? Is that that's be written, written into the okay. decision. Yep. Awesome. That's uh, what we call a condition. Thank you. Okay, and Attorney McCann, if you could respond to the other questions about trash lower level with storage and fitness and whether or not there's bedrooms in the lower level hello Steve Ginotti hi how are you uh, so could, could yeah, you remind me I'm sorry okay. trash cans sorry. yeah so they were there uh, the first question was where is trash even though it's not part of your uh, application to us about adding a third floor, I think it was addressed through site plan? Yes. And, and where does that sit right now? So trash cans would be out back. There's a sidewalk behind the building, okay. so the, each tenant would have their own. Uh, is there like a designated storage area, a fence? It's, uh, there's otherwise? a fence with a walkway, so we would just place them out so back. So the barrels would be behind some behind. type of fence for storage? Yeah, behind okay. the building. And then uh, could you address the lower level uh, storage and fitness areas? Is that like a common use for the building? Common use for the building, correct. So is this, this would be uh, uh, not condos. These are rentals, correct? Correct. Rentals in potentially long term to turn it into a condo. So part of the uh, rental package would be to make use of these areas? It would be included with their rent, you know, okay. so if they wanted to buy a machine, they needed extra space, Okay. Um, they would have that downstairs for and, them. And are there bedrooms on the lower level or is by putting this addition eliminating the lower level bedrooms? No, we're going to add a one bedroom, the three bedroom, it just lays it out a little bit better, two up top and one will go downstairs. And that's in all four units? No, that's just in one just unit. Just in one unit? The one three-bedroom unit. And there's one, in that three-bedroom unit, third there's bedroom one in the basement. basement. 
the other three units, no be bedrooms in the basement. Correct. Okay. I think that answers all of it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any uh, further questions on 36 Corner? Yes, in the back. Lenny Marshall from 35 Central Ave, two doors up. Uh, my only response to the traffic, is, uh, the trash, is that behind the building is where the 12 foot setback is. There's a chain link fence, so those barrels are going to be right on the neighbor's property, basically. If there was a way to conceal those, either with a solid fence or some type of. Well, uh, I think that's what he said. They were, they were going to be fenced in, the, the storage area. There's a chain the link fence now. Uh, I didn't think he specified, but. I can't imagine they are going to make it look bad. Okay. But I, I'll let them respond to that, guys, if you could. Did you type a fence you have in mind, vinyl fence or otherwise? Um, currently, it did not plan for a vinyl fence. Um, I prefer to do a black aluminum fence. I think it makes the property feel more open, not confined. Um, if I could build small little just for trash cubbies we could do, which would be vinyl. Yeah, uh, I think still would me, if I'm hearing the neighbors right, they, they just, you know, they wouldn't want that eyesore, sure. I guess, so. Uh, I think visually, um, if you see the plans, I don't actually think you would actually see them, but the one six family uh, next to me would see. Okay. Okay. That, uh, that do it? That answer your question? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dave Chisholm, 42 Central. Just a point of egress, because I live in the neighborhood, so I'm extremely concerned, and I know we tend to side with the fire department, but is this something that could become a condition of today to have them block it off? Because you can barely get down. All the Many of the homes have single-width car driveways, so already... We're parking on the street where I have to pull over, so you come, then I go I by. I understand. Uh, uh, in, in fairness to the applicant, they're not here before us for that mm -hmm. egress, and that was already decided at prior. Um, Is that something that they could? I think it was done through the planning board, so it's really not a zoning issue. Mm -hmm. We're really here to decide whether or not to allow them to add this third floor. I don't mind talking about it and sure. discussing it. But yeah, it's not, I would, it's I would not just, if, it, if it were going to change, they would have to go before the planning board. If so they it cannot change it. currently. Gotcha. And even if they want to change it, they're going to have to take the proper steps to do that. Sure. Did I have that right, Attorney McCann? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else? 36 Conant Street. Mr. Bradstreet, come on up. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, you can get in the queue, Mr. Bratz. I know it takes you a while to get over there. Colleen Hugo, 40 Central Ave. I just had a quick question in regards to visitor spots. So you have, I don't know if it's eight tenant spots. How many extra visitor spots are you going to have for people to, to come? Because then that's going to roll over to Central Ave for them parking on the side of the road. Well, again, I'll reiterate. They're here on the addition. The 12 spots are what's required. Um, through our parking bylaw, so they meet the parking requirements. You're up. See, I gave you a head start. Again, Bill Bradstreet, uh, Essex Street, Tommy, member precinct one. I think what you described was as a walkway behind the building, and trash barrels would be placed on top of this. No barrier around them. I'd be concerned. <clears throat> I don't know what some people put in their trash, but certainly vermin have a, have a uh, desire to see what's there. I, I would like to see, I don't live next to them, but I certainly would like to see a confined area for the trash barrels, such. Again, I, for them, the neighborhoods, I would be concerned. Okay. That's it. Attorney Little four-legged creatures. Uh, we'll we'll uh, let the applicant respond to that. Seems like we got a lot of concern on the trash. Uh, 
we're making no changes to the number of units. We're making no changes to the site layout. This uh, was an issue that was vetted with the planning board during site plan approval. Um, it's really no different than anybody else in the neighborhood who has their trash cans um, outside, which is uh, and which would be a lot of people. Um, And, what? You, and, th and this will be town pickup, correct? This isn't private trash. <laughs> this will utilize town? Yes. Yeah. Um, so it would be like anybody else in pull putting their barrels out. This is, there are only four units here. Um, I don't know whether there was a dumpster uh, when this was medical office, um, but certainly residential trash, they're going to have a trash can, they'll have a recycling I can so um, we're not proposing a big fenced-in dumpster area which I think can cause more trouble particularly on a small site with only four units very good anyone else from the public 36 Conant Street yep hello Good evening, my name's Kyle Gillis, owner of 29 Central Avenue, uh, directly next to 36 Conant Street. Um, just in regards to the addition of the, uh, the third floor, um, I think it alters the, the feel of the neighborhood pretty considerably, given the location and positioning of the building. Um, essentially, adding that level of occupancy to full uh, units with two bedrooms for apartments um, that are essentially able to look over everyone's uh, backyard through um, the Central Avenue side and the Conant Street side. I feel alters the uh, and, and disrupts the feel for of our backyards as uh, neighbors, and um, also just given the. Uh, now extensive construction project that they are proposing and the egress of the construction vehicles that will be coming through this property. I just wanted to state that uh, it, it feels disruptive given the extensiveness of the project and knowing the route that these, ut these vehicles are going to be utilizing. Thank you. Anyone else on 36 Conant Street? Come on up. <clears throat> Judy Abansky, 40 Central Avenue. My big concern is the traffic. Have any of you people been down Central Avenue on the zoning board? Many times. Okay. There's only parking on one side of the street. So if you live on Central Avenue, and everybody on both sides have cars, have visitors or whatever, there's no place to park. If there's egress coming out of that uh, uh, condo building, and it's one way, which way is the one way? One way onto Central Avenue, because Central Avenue is a cut through from Maple Street for everyone that is going down to Woodville. Okay, and that is what it is. It is, yep. and I've lived there for over 55 years, and to get down that street, it's probably, I could give you a handful of times that I didn't have to wait and pull over to let somebody go by. Yeah. So that is a concern I, for me. I agree with you. It's that a they need street. to cut off that exit onto Central Ave. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, unfortunately, that's not the um, purview of this board. That would have been the planning board. Okay. But we are hearing your concerns. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on 36 Conan? Okay. Hi. Hi, Keith Chaloney, 25 Central Ave. Um, I just want to respond to the, uh, with the trash. I know it's a, a topic of conversation. The barrels um, that most of us have, we keep them in a garage. Um, we're not talking about the day that it's going to be out. We're talking about where they're going to keep them throughout the week and I work the overnight I already see rats when I when I leave at night if you're leaving trash barrels out you're talking about you're inviting even more rats and that's an issue 
So that was it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any one of the comments on uh, Conan Street? Okay. At this point, I will close the public hearing. Uh, anything you want to say, Attorney McCann, to wrap up before we deliberate? Um, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think this project was fully vetted by the planning board during their site plan uh, approval process. We're not increasing the number of units. We're not changing the site plan at all. We're simply trying to make the building look better and attract better quality of tenants by providing. Um, on-site storage and some uh, amenities that uh, that good quality tenants are are looking for in in areas where where they live and the uh, and the storage area will address some of those um, concerns. So we again are proposing to add the uh, the uh, new level, still compliant with the height requirement. And we do think, well I, well, I heard that this um, this is going to alter the feel of the neighborhood. We think it's going to alter it in a good way by changing this from what is clearly a commercial-looking building into a building that's going to look uh, more residential and with a no increase in units, no increase in bedrooms. And we do not think that this proposal is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what has already been approved by this board and the planning board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jeff, I believe I started with you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, in, in evaluating what's more detrimental than what presently exists, um, it's a pretty ugly looking building right now. Um, and um, the the uh, the mansard renderings look I think look a lot nicer. Um, we have to remember. I was just looking at the site plan for the existing condition. There's 19 parking spaces, and practically the entire lot is filled with pavement. And the new site plan has some of those spaces removed, and plantings and mulch beds. And I think it will be a, an improvement to the neighborhood. Um, None of us on the board like the second egress onto Central Street, but we were outvoted on that uh, by the uh, fire department. Uh, I think it's a terrible idea to have that back there. But um, I will approve this building with the conditions that it uh, is only four units and a total of nine bedrooms. Thank you, Jeff. Ken. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I mean, in 20 and 21, they changed these medical offices to residential. Well, this building doesn't look residential to me. It looks medical office. So I think the renderings look really good. Um, I would approve this. Thank oh, you. and as far as the trash, personally, I'd rather see barrels there than a dumpster. Just my opinion. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Ken, Ken Jay. I would also approve this. I think the roof's going to look good. I think it's, uh, yeah, it'll make it look a lot better than the brick. No, just the rectangle. So I like it. Thank you, Karen. And Kareen? Um, I, I, I agree with the other members. I, I think the new rendings are, are lovely. I think it, it will really enhance the neighborhood. And I think once the project is completed, it's, it's going to look more like a residential building than what it looks like now. Um, with regard to the site plan, I noticed that the site plan uh, was approved back with the prior owner. So um, again, I, I don't think that that complicates anything, but I do have to say that these, uh, that these new owners, it looks like what they propose to do is a lot nicer and um, a lot more residential in quality than what the old um, owners proposed. So uh, good luck with this project. Thank you, Corrine. And, uh, and I want to thank the neighbors for coming out. I, I think that's what makes our job easier, believe it or not, even though it's a lot for us to take in. Uh, participating in um, these types of meetings gets all the things on the table. So uh, like Ken said, um, and Jeff, I mean, none of us like the second egress. <laughs> uh, I, I think it, you know, it, it still speaks to a medical building to me. 
So, uh, but we weren't successful with that, and that's not what's before us tonight. What's before us tonight is the addition of a floor. Uh, I feel like the rendering is a quality looking project. Yes, the neighborhood will go through a little bit of growing pain as they go through the construction. But I think at the end of the day, this looks like a, a nice project. Um, there's, there's a change in the impervious surface, as uh, I believe Jeff pointed out, down to 12 parking spots. It'll have a much better look, a much better residential feel to it. And the concerns about the trash uh, are understood. I think the owners hearing that, I, I believe uh, if somebody's going to invest this amount of money into doing a, a, an addition of this magnitude, uh, I think what you're going to see at the end of the day is, is a pretty good looking project and the barrel and trash concern wouldn't be any more than any residential house. So um, with that said, I would uh, approve this and I, and I hope the project goes well. And with the condition that uh, it, it will only be four units and it will be limited to nine bedrooms. So if I could get a motion, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to grant the finding in accordance with section 3.11.B.1 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaw to allow a one-story expansion of the pre-existing non-conforming building as shown on the plan submitted by the applicant as it will not be substantially more detrimental that one, than what presently exists with the condition that uh, there's a maximum of four units and a total of nine bedrooms. I've, I'll second I've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you and uh, good luck. Good luck. All right, moving right along, Mr. Chair, uh, Clerk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our next case is 67 Purchase Street, zoned R2. Request for a dimensional variance from Table 2 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaw to allow a recently constructed garage to remain in place with a rear setback of 3.5 feet where 5 feet was approved via variance and a side setback of 3.2 feet where 3.7 feet was approved via variance. A uh, request is made by Paul and Gladys DeFranco, docket 23-5010. Hold up one minute while yeah. they clear out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Mr. DeFranco, I'm kind of surprised you're here. Uh, but go right ahead. Tell us what's up. Uh, well, let me just start from kind of my uh, exhibit here. Um, so we're requesting a setback variance relief to address minor discrepancies that happened during the construction or reconstruction of our garage. Um, back in May of 2021, the board granting zoning relief uh, to allow the renovation of a, our single family home. Uh, it was a large project. Uh, I was actually the, pro the contractor on this project myself, did most of the work myself. Um, we tried to reduce the nonconformance of the property, improve the aesthetics of the property as much as possible by adding back architectural features. Um, to the eaves of the house, um, reducing encroachment to the front of the house. Um, unfortunately, when the garage was reconstructed, there was minor deviations from the previous approved variance. Um, the garage um, foundation, as my as-built shows, um, shows a foundation setback of 4.8 feet from the rear lot line, rather than the previously approved five feet setback to the foundation. Um, the, original approval did not account for an eave which is actually 3.5 feet to the lot line um, but again in keeping with the original architectural design um, the eaves are there as well as they were in the uh, original construction documents the garage foundation is also further actually from the side lot line of 4.4 feet uh, to the actual foundation 3.7 feet was existing um, but the eave is now 3.2 feet to the lot line um, I'd like to note that we did actually shrink the width of the garage. It was originally approved to be a foot wider, but I did shrink it in concern of its placement. Um, also reducing just the overall square footage of it. Um, all aspects of the construction, including the sig significant renovations and improvements to the dwelling were completed in conformance um, with the approved plans. 
Um, we believe the renovations are, they were significant and improves the neighborhood's aesthetics. The, the minor deviations were um, unfortunate and I feel honestly embarrassed to be here, to be pointing them out. Um, but basically we're here requesting variance from the rear lot line relative to the garage to allow the garage to be 4.8 feet to the foundation and an eave of 3.5 to the lot line. Um, as previously proved the five feet and to allow the side setback of the garage eaves to be 3.2 to the lot line and the foundation of 4.4 feet to the lot line. That's it? That's basically it. Well, yes. Mr. DeFranco, I got to say, you know, as you as a builder um, and you're in an R1 zone, you came in here looking for relief on what is normally an eight foot setback. Uh, to make this kind of error to me is inexcusable. Uh, I just, I really don't understand it. Um, we know that eaves are considered part of the setback. Um, uh, Could I address that? Yeah, actually? sure. I so, mean, yeah, so th this is where the confusion actually came to play. If you look at the original plot plan approved by the zoning board in 2021, mm -hmm. um, it does not specify a real o rear overhang. It shows a five foot back setback to the foundation. I took that to believe that the setback approved was five feet to the foundation. The previous structure had eaves, front and back overhangs. When we asked our site surveyor about this, we were under the impression and believed that the overhang didn't matter, which is why it was not included on this drawing, which was originally submitted and approved. So uh, we were under the impression that, again, if you I don't know if you can pull that up or not. Um, the original packet, the original approved by the ZBA, shows a five foot directly to the foundation, which is why I took it to be five feet to the foundation. Well, okay. Uh, um, gonna... As well as, you know, the, all the dimensions stated on the original uh, proposed plot plan are foundation dimensional uh, uh, dimensions, excuse me. Well, I, I guess I look at it a little differently. You any of seeking a relief from a setback we granted it and you even violated that so uh i'm going to turn it over to the board for questions and we'll see where it goes uh kareen let's start with you um i, I don't have any questions thanks ken jay I, I don't have any questions you explained it pretty well uh ken no questions jeff what's there to question <laughs> Well, the well, only let's, uh, hold on. Oh, sorry. We'll, we'll ask a question. Sure. Uh, so you um, you don't you just have comments, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and Mr. DeFranco, just to recap, so we granted you. I just want to make sure I have it clear. We granted you. Uh, I guess three point five. Is that correct? You granted the rear eight. setback. We granted was three point five, where eight is required, and you are. At what right now? No, I'm sorry. The, the original approve was a five foot setback on the back lot. And line. now you're looking for 3.5. 4.8. Well, it's, it's 4.8 to the foundation. Again, and as submitted, it was drawn as to the foundation. All right, well, hold on. I don't want to know to the foundation. I want to know to the overhang. It's okay. 45 to the eaves. It's to the eaves. So the eave now, numbers all right, are. So just. Yes, to the eaves, it's 3.5. Our, our setback includes the eaves. So okay. are, what are you looking for right now? So as of right now, we're looking for a rear setback of 3.5. Okay. And a side setback of 3.2. And we granted you what? We were granted a five-foot setback in the rear and a 3.7 setback on the side. Okay. All right. I think I have it clear. Uh, no questions from the board. Anyone in the public like to speak on... 67 Purchase Street. Hearing none, uh, we'll come back and we will deliberate. Kareen. I will vote for this. Thank you, Kareen. Ken. Uh, I'll vote for this. Um, it, it looks great, the garage and the dwelling and stuff. It's unfortunate what happened, but it's, uh, you know, I made a mistake. I, I would never uh, want you to try to move that beautiful garage now <laughs> and stuff it looks great so I, I would vote for this thank you Ken and Ken Scholes um, I'll vote for this in looking at this 
March 22nd, 2021 plot plan, it specifically says overhangs on the old garage. You knew you were going to have overhangs on the new garage. But I will vote for this. I don't like it one bit. Thank you. And Jeff? Uh, I'm not going to vote for this. I'm not going to vote this. Uh, Mr. DeFranco, I am also not going to vote for this. I think this is a case of, uh, you know, you, you didn't follow the plan. <laughs> and um, now you're here asking this board to uh, forgive that mistake. And uh, I'm not, you know, you're in R1. You're in a tight spot there. So this is something that I think should have been really uh, looked at. And for that reason, I will not vote for it. So you don't have the votes for the variance. Uh, what would you like to do? You can ask for a continuance. You can withdraw without prejudice. Or we can take a vote. If we take a vote and you're denied, you can't come back for two years. Um, I mean, the, I, your options are limited here. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I would forward you on to the building inspector on what your potential change could be uh, and yeah well, go yeah, ahead I'm <laughs> just super quick I was say so yeah if if you if it does get denied then the options before the applicant are to yeah take the eaves off uh, to, to make it uh, comply com compliant with what was approved previously out outside of that I mean you're you, yeah I mean you, I mean, you're basic. A denial essentially says you have to get rid of that nonconformity. You can't. It's no longer a pre-existing nonconformity. It's just outside of what was approved. And if he withdrew, it would technically still be in violation. It, it's not matching the building permit. So in this, usually we have a scenario where the applicant says, "Okay, I'll withdraw and go back to the drawing board." But this, it's, it's built. already been drawn. There needs to be yeah. a rectif. There needs so it needs to be rectified. And that if, and as Mr. Zakelli is saying, if the board is saying, no, they are not granting the variance here, the relief for to be remove the eaves or stay in, stay in violation in which we would issue fines. Mr. Chairman, I, yeah. I will change my vote to yes. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. DeFranco, you got to get out of jail via my, my, my uh, fellow zoning board member. So you do have the votes now, four to one. I will still uh, vote no. Uh, could I get a motion, please? <coughs> you want me to read it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I move to issue the uh, dimensional variance from Table 2 of the Dam Zoning Bylaw to allow reconstructed garage to remain in place with a rear setback of 3.5 feet where 8 feet is required and with a side setback of 3.2 feet where 8 feet is required. The hardship is the site's shape and topography. The condition does not affect other pr properties and structures in the same zoning district. A little or, literal enforcement of the zoning bylaw would involve substantial hardship to the applicant. Granting this variance will not create a substantial detriment to the public good and will not nullify or derogate from the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. I've got a motion and a second. Not me. Second. A second. And Mr. DeFranco, just the further discussion would be, I mean, you know, you got to pay attention to this stuff if a future project comes before us, okay? I mean, the only I, thing, I know mistakes happen, no, but this, this I, is, I, this is I, one that was avoidable. I agree, and I just, I, the one piece I did forget to mention, though, is that um, I, the only piece of this project which I did not do was the foundation. You learned your lesson, I I hope. certainly <laughs> did, and I had issues with the general contractor, which I ended up firing. But okay. Even so, it still was still my responsibility, gotcha. and I and I fully accept responsibility for got the it. mistake. All right, I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Now uh, you got it, four to one. Thank you. All right, and then, um, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we adjourn. No, we well, have one, one more. Case. Oh, wait, one more case. Violations. Let's see. Uh, Sorry about that, Danvers. Good evening, guys. Thanks, thanks for taking um, Hold Brian. on one sec. I'm sorry. Um, our final case is 144 Pine Street. Uh, Elevation Foods, Inc. will provide an uh, informal update on of their corrective plan of action as required by the enforcement order that was issued to the property on October of 2022 for the illegal outdoor storage operation that has been occurring on the property. Represent, uh, representation made by Brian Calkins, and th this doesn't have to have a docket sheet. Docket number, correct? 
And I take it you're Mr. Calkins. I am Mr. Calkins. All right, and Mr. Calkins, just, just before, before you get started, uh, I just want to be clear. There's a lot of history on this site, particularly with this board. Um, we're well aware of your operations and what operations have gone on in the past. So um, I don't know uh, where and when you came into this position of yours. So just understand that you know our discussion tonight is okay. about moving forward for sure, but um, also about how much you're aware of the history in the past here. So go ahead and uh, tell us what's going on and what your uh, proposal is to rectify things at 144 Pine Street. Um, like I said, my name is Brian Calkins. I'm the plant manager. I've been with <coughs> Elevation Foods for just a little over a year, um, so I wasn't aware of any prior history uh, until the violation occurred. <laughs> at the time of the violation, there were four outside storage spe uh, units being used. I have since eliminated two. By doing multiple things, we have hired a driver to help shuttle product between our facility and off-site facility. Uh, furthermore, I've been working with the other plant that is part of the, the main group elevation down in Tennessee over the last six weeks to allow them to take some pressure off our facility so to be rest, less reliant on outside storage. For the remaining two units, one has been switched to electrical to help alleviate the sound with plans to switch the second of the remaining to electrical also. We also have plans in place, and I, I brought a preliminary drawing to fence in the two remaining units. Uh, to, to further uh, barrier any possible sound that these two units might have. Also, I understand, you know, aesthetically, it, it would look much better to the community if uh, the units were fenced in. Furthermore, I know Georgia brought to my attention, there were some concerns about how the maintenance of the grounds in general. Since that time, we've done multiple cleanups uh, of the rail chair area right along the side of the building. Um, we've met with the facility to address any noise concern with the team. Um, and really, I want them to take a lot more pride in the, in the work area because that's not the way I, I take a lot of pride in that facility. And we've done a lot of good things in the last year, and I hate to have a you know, black eye on all the great things we've done as an organization. Okay. Um, so let me, let me see if I can get, get you some more information. Okay. Um, so first of all, are you familiar with the decision that uh, was rendered by this board in 2014? I heard about it after the violation, yes. Okay, so I'm just going to try to summarize because I went through the minutes and uh, one of the things that brought then Menino Brothers Gourmet Foods into us was the exact problems that are occurring <coughs> now uh, in almost the same capacity. Uh, their promise to us back then was there would be no outside trailers and there would be uh, no pallets. And um, so neither of those things, to my knowledge, are occurring. Are you familiar with any of these pictures that were taken by our enforcement no. department? So, you know, it's showing all these pallets. I'll hand them down to the board members to have a look at. Uh, refrigerated trucks outside. So none of that's allowed through this variance uh, that we granted you in 2014. Now, I was there today. Um, They're all still there. You know, I, again, I'm not trying to blindside you with this, but I think there's a level of frustration with not only the planning department and the enforcement department, but with this board because so much detail went into this uh, to grant 144 Pine Street uh, an additional building size. Again, like you heard some other cases tonight, in a residential neighborhood, Noise is not the only problem, so I guess I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're doing some things to address that. But, um, you know, I look at the detail that's in here and, um, you know, no outside storage trailers, no outside storage at all. Um, that the refrigeration trailers were going to be addressed by us giving this uh, building to the, you guys. Uh, can I ask you, are you still around 30 employees, or is that no, higher or lower? We are at about 100 employees right now. All right, so you know, things have drastically changed, which I, 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 I would say is good for you, right, um, over the 10 or so years almost. Yep. But um, you know, to not be following this decision that uh, was hammered out by this board and its prior owner, um, it still falls with you. It falls with the property, I'm right? Sure. So. What are we going to do to address the, the pallets that are outside and 
uh, the storage of a refrigeration 18 wheelers on the site because they were all supposed to go away by granting the operation that was explained to us back then what? was that the well let me just finish so that the trailers would come once a day they would all the product would go inside this new building that we granted and all the work would be done in there and then another truck would come back and, and reload and, and there would be no need for refrigerated trucks on the site and all pallets would be stored in a storage area so with that Please respond. So this is the first I'm hearing about the pallet situation. When I just in the note from Georgia or any notification, the pallets have never been discussed with me as being an issue. Um, so uh, we do. I, I thought part of we were allowed to fence in the pallets. Uh, there was a fence in area to the side of the building, and I thought that was a part of the original agreement. If I misunderstood. Well, it is, but I have photographs yeah. here that don't show them in that fenced okay. area and in large stacks of them. Yeah. I mean, if I were a neighbor. I wouldn't want to be looking at this. Understood. That can be addressed. That's just employee training. Well, so. I, I do think they're addressable, yeah. but yeah. I, again, um, because we work with plan, yeah. planning staff, yes. the town staff, you know, I, I, I think the chase has been on here for quite some time okay. to, to kind of get this stuff rectified. And I, I'm, I'm hopeful, um, I guess I'm just hopeful that we can come up with some kind of plan here because I only it only came to my attention through a selectman meeting yes. where I saw the neighbors there complaining to the selectman. And now um, I don't expect you to follow our selectman meetings, but I do expect if there's a zoning decision um, at your uh, place of work and our town staff writes letters to the fact that you're in violation and it takes you four to five months to get here before us, um, I think we just need a better working relationship, a better plan. And so I'd like to hear what we're going to do to address the pallets and the trucks. Because it sounds like, and again, I'll give you an out here, maybe Menino Foods' operation is different than your operation. So let's maybe talk about that a right. little bit. The pallets are very fixable. That's just a, a matter of employee training. But is your operation similar to theirs, where you're taking in a lot of inventory? Yes, 100%. But we've grown tremendously in size. Similar product mix, prepared entrees, quiche and pot pies. But the clientele has changed dramatically since the prior owners. You know, we serve customers such as Whole so, Foods. So let me cut right to the chase. Yeah. How do we eliminate the 18-wheel of refrigeration trucks that are not supposed to be parked on site? Well, I'd like to submit a proposed uh, submittal that we're, that we allowed to fence those in to block them off from the general public. Well, that that if I will go to town staff on that one, I think yeah. that's going to require uh, an additional variance. Yes. Yes, that's what we'd exactly. like to do. So that is what we had laid out for Mr. Cockins. Yes. Given we hadn't heard a response or hadn't gotten the momentum we had wanted, we had said, "Can you please come in informally, give an update to the board?" Um, and we had laid out two options, which was don't do any outdoor storage and follow the variance, or apply for a special permit to do outdoor storage and then additionally resolve that earlier condition the board set and if they are satisfied. And are we calling the outdoor storage these refrigeration trucks? Yes. So the, if Mr. Calkins wants to apply for that, which it sounds like that's what he's been working on is the application, um, it would have a full site plan with all the new outdoor storage standards we have in the zoning bylaw, which is screening, setbacks, fencing. Okay. Um, and we had told Brian that he needed to have that submitted by March 11th to be on the April 10th meeting, and that was the final deadline okay. we are going to grant before we start. And filing. we're on track to do that? Yes, sir. Okay, and it sounds like, uh, you know, you, you, you said, and I'll take you at your word, because you're new to the yeah, scene, I'm right, that yeah, the pallet yeah. thing is very correctable. I, that's just, I can meet with a plan tomorrow on it. Okay. I and mean, I will. I, I'm imagining, well, again, and... and I don't know your business, and I'm not no. going to pretend to, yeah. but I'm going to imagine that, you know, 10 or so years ago, nine years ago, when we approved this and there was 30 employees there, and now you have 100 employees, I'm imagining your volume has also increased with that, and I'm guessing pallets too, or is it the same kind of operation as I Benito can't speak foods? intelligently on what the revenue or, or sales were back in... Well, just speak to me yeah. about pallets. <laughs> I mean, I, I see quite, yeah. you know, quite large stacks here. So I guess the question, I'll ask it another way. Are you able to store all these pallets that I'm seeing now all around your facility? 
in the fenced area that was created to house these yeah. pallets, to get them out of eyesight. I think that's a very fixable problem, sir. I okay. mean, I was unaware that the pallets were a concern for the community. No one had brought to my attention until part tonight. Of, it's part of that decision. Yeah. So what I can do is I can reduce the amount of pallets that are kept on site. We use a local vendor for pallets. Okay. Maybe instead of one that's delivery a, a week, start, we right go to there. two to three yeah. a week and just keep less on hand in general. So, so you know, we don't have as much on hand at any one time to enable us to keep it inside. And then it's more employee training to make sure that we hold employees accountable and make sure they don't keep any outside the building. Okay. I think uh, these are all good things. I mean, we, you know, obviously we want this yeah. to work, but I, I, I guess I can't express enough the sensitivity of your location and the history here, particularly with the residents. Because again, how did I find out about it? By hearing residents at a selectman meeting and, um, just thinking, well, wait a minute, we had trust all this. And that's when we gave you a variance nine years ago. How is this happening, right? To me, it's an epic failure. And, um, you know, we, we want to see it work for you. You know, that does become a point, I think, where a, a business maybe outgrows its ability to function in this location. Maybe you're not there, and maybe it just needs to change. But I'm, I've dominated the, the conversation here. I'm going to just strobe the board so everybody can give you a little okay. input. Um, no and I will start uh, with Kareem. Um, I, I don't really have much input. I wasn't on the board when this was originally um, before the board. So um, this is kind of new to me as well. So I do not have any questions or comments. Thank you, Kareem. And Ken Jay. Well, it sounds like you're uh, coming to some sort of resolution on this and uh, you'll be back. Yes, sir. Uh, for another. Uh, Brown, so I'll, yeah, I have no other questions. Thanks, and Ken Schulz. Thank you. Um, so you obviously saw the the letter from staff planning. Yes. So she gave you two options, yeah. and you looks like you're going with option two. Yes, sir. I just advise you to follow through with that. Absolutely. By the March 11th. And Jeff, the only thing I can express is frustration because yeah. I mean, you know, we have a couple of businesses in town. We drag them in here whenever you know when it, we only see them when they need something from us and then um you know we don't get we don't get our decisions followed which is very frustrating well and, and again um it's a very sensitive area you know of the yep. town and it, there are places in town where different zones butt up against each other and there are there are problems and this is one of those places. So, so, Mr. Cock, and, you know, again, we appreciate you coming in and, and talking with us because I think there is a level of frustration, as Jeff has um, alluded to, that, you know, again, I did sit on this um, case in 2014, and I'll have you know I voted against it okay. uh, for this very reason because I didn't think it was enforceable. I felt like uh, it, it, it was not going to work, but at that time, we were assured by your predecessor and the representing attorney that what we were going to grant was going to solve the problems. That has not happened. Yeah. Now, for how long you guys are responsible for that and how long Menino Brothers was responsible for that, I don't know. But again, I think it's about moving forward from here. Um, I can tell you, um, <clears throat> whatever proposal you put before us, I'm sure the neighborhood will have some pushback. I, I understand. And um, so my question to you would be, have you met with any neighbors recently? And uh, if you haven't, I, I, I would suggest this might be a good olive branch to extend to try to uh, see if there's some kind of resolution that can, can be found before you're in before us. Understood, sir. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. All right, so uh, you know we're not voting on anything, but um, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about our, your operation? I mean, is this? Do you see this? Are you, you know, are you 150 employees a year from now? No, you, uh, I mean, so we recognize the limits of our facility. Uh, the company also owns a facility down in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I. Maybe the reason why part of this project has dragged on longer than I like is I've been asked the task to go get the other facility to take some pressure off our Danvers facility, especially on Pacific products they've never made there. So I've been spending a lot of time down in Tennessee the last month. Well, I, you know, I missed a couple of weeks with a personal show on top of that. So um, we kind of fell back on it, but we recognize the limits of our building. And I, you know, I, unlike maybe the management, the owners of this company, I'm from the North Shore. I grew up in Newburyport. 
So you're not but just I, trying to duck out no, the snow and go no, down I, to Tennessee. I, you know what? Okay. I went to Triton. You know, I, I live in Newberry. You know, it's just, uh, you know, I'm from, I'm not from Danvers, but I'm from the area, guys. So okay. um, I want to respect the town and work with the town. And, and I want to do what's right for everybody. Well, I would recommend, and, um, you know, it's public record that, uh, and maybe uh, planning department can help. But look at the old planning, uh, okay. the old zoning decision okay. and what the, what was agreed to in 2014. And I think you'll see exactly probably where the frustration lies with the neighbors. And again, this isn't anything to do with the noise. Okay. And I think you've, you've already stated you're yeah. going to make so, some attempts with, uh, did you say electric forklifts? So, so we went to, uh, away from diesel to, to electric on all, but we, we had four. We went to, down to two. One is an electric already. If the, 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 permit is granted, the, the rezone is granted, then we would go to electric on both. Okay. But that would require a capital investment, but we'd rather get, you know, before we make that I mean, I would even go as yeah. far to say, you know, talk to your vendors, your, okay. your delivery people yep. about, you know, the fact that you're in a tight neighborhood, yep. um, pulling up at 2 a.m. and having a conversation outside with somebody who's yep. working the overnight, you know, take it inside. Because, course, yep. uh, you know that noise and uh and and if you're gonna get the pallets addressed and i'm sure town staff will be happy to work with you so yeah uh, the pallets will be addressed this week i promise you we got my great room. all right anything else you want to add no that's it sir all right well we look forward to seeing um something before us and hopefully we can get this resolved again absolutely for the last time yeah go ahead oh sorry yeah mr bresser you'd like to comment come on up you sent you the last of the last here okay Again, Mill Branch Street, uh, Essex Street, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 1. I'm surprised that the residents of Rice Street aren't here tonight, perhaps the weather all considered. Well, because I the last time that there was we... There's no public notice on this, is that why? They, they weren't notified, but they'll be notified when uh, Mr. Calkins submits an application. This was just a volunteer situation by the owner of the property because we, you know, are no at our wits end with this and we, we would like to have it addressed, so. Yeah, no abutters were notified, so. That's, so that's. That, that was my concern yeah. that I know the last time, probably you too, the uh, folks from Rice Street were very upset with the noise and uh, what have you. And I think you've mentioned the cause of some of the noise. So if that's addressed, perhaps uh, they'd be a little happier I don't live next door, but right. they do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, um, Mr. Calkins, we uh, we look forward to your application, and um, like I said, I think it would be a uh, a good thing to try to reach out to neighbors if possible. Okay. And uh, hold some kind of meeting and tell them you're aware of the issues and um, see what we can do to rectify it. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Could I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.